Hello, I'm Steve Wan. I'm CEO of the National Irrigators Council. The Murray-Darling Basin is Australia's most in food, important food and fibre growing area. Uh, and irrigation is a critical part of the production of that food and fibre. In the 2017-18 year, 36% of the value of agricultural production from the basin was from irrigated produce. It's around $8.6 billion worth of produce. So it's a, a critical part of the picture of Australian agriculture. And it's the reason why the Murray-Darling Basin Plan needed to be something which balanced, uh, which provided us with healthy rivers, healthy communities, and with the continuing capacity to produce food and fibre. And that was an objective outlined by John Howard in 2007 when he announced the plan. And he said that the aim was to increase agricultural production using less water. Now that's a difficult balance. And uh, it's one which, is, which means that we have a plan that uh, probably uh, people on the irrigator side uh, don't like and on the environment side don't like. It's an attempt at balance which is extremely difficult and the fact that nobody particularly likes the plan is probably why it has its best chance of success. I just wanted to outline a couple of the challenges with the plan and, and where we've got to so far. Now we have seen significant harm to some communities from the buyback of water. We've also seen some where the results have been better, where water has been obtained through infrastructure investment. The overall outcome of the water that's been purchased so far is that the environmental water holder holds over 2,100 billion litres of water uh, in the environmental accounts. That's real water, not paper water, and it can be used every year and allocation is available against that water. So since 2009 and uh, since the plan came into place, the environmental water holder has actually added uh, over 18 Sydney harbours worth of water to the river for environmental benefits. So uh, that's in 750 environmental watering events, more than 9,000 billion litres over that time. And of course that's added on to the normal flows which we have in the rivers. And that's producing positive environmental results already, although it is early days and it will take decades to see those flow through. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we're left with some quite large challenges. We have seen uh, a decrease in the water available to irrigators. So one in every five litres of water that was available before the plan came into place uh, for irrigation has now gone to the environment. That means that when farmers are looking for water, they're buying it from a much smaller pool. And of course, uh, when you combine that with drought, uh, when you combine it with uh, the, the water market, that means we are seeing quite high prices for water and that does have negative impacts on commodities which don't have the, the best terms of trade. Uh, we had a water market in place well before the Basin Plan and that was aimed to uh, see water go to its highest value use. You'd have to say that that is what has happened. We have seen the growth in some uh, products that have uh, quite high value which are giving very good returns to the people who are using them. We've also seen the shift in water to different parts of the system where that's possible. And that also has caused uh, opportunities, but it's also caused some problems which we're seeing at the moment. Uh, we've got two big challenges in the Basin Plan, and that is uh, that even though the water recovery target has been met effectively in the Southern Basin, uh, meaning that there is no more water buyback needed, we still have to get the 605 gigalitres worth of sustainable diversion limit adjustment measures. They're called supply projects. They're projects like the Menindi Lakes reconfiguration, constraints removal, which are intended to provide environmental outcomes the equivalent of 605 gigalitres. Now, you might say it's up to governments to deliver that, and you'd be absolutely right. It is up to the governments to deliver that, but uh, the people who will pay the price if they fail is irrigators and irrigation communities because it's likely that that, have, that water, that uh, if the 605 target is not met, would have to then be recovered through more purchases. So it's really important that we keep pressure on governments to ensure that that's, those 605 gigalitres worth of supply projects are successfully delivered. The other aspect is that as part of the, uh, the deal that was made when the Basin Plan was introduced, the government of the day agreed to 450 gigalitres of so-called upwater. And that's water which is to be uh, obtained through efficiency projects. Now, it was clear that that was never meant to happen 
uh, with any negative impacts on communities and we want to keep governments to that. But from an irrigator point of view and from a National Irrigators Council point of view, it's also important to be cooperative with governments in those pro processes. Uh, the concern that I have, and uh, I have been involved for a very long time in politics in Australia and New South Wales particularly, is that if we don't have uh, at least a meaningful part of that water recovered, if we're not seen to have made a strong effort from governments, that a future government after 2024 might go out and try and recover that water. So I think two big uh, challenges which are there, they are outlined by the Productivity Commission's five-year review of the Basin Plan and that's something which should form the basis for future action. The current drought is causing a, a lot of issues. Uh, we are seeing increased losses because of the way that the Murray River is being managed and we are concerned that those losses aren't being effectively or equitably distributed uh, amongst users. We're also seeing issues because of the way that water has transferred downriver and we've called for an ACCC inquiry which the government has uh, said it will be setting up. Uh, we want to see a situation where people who have got allocations uh, downriver can be assured that they'll get the water and in the meantime we also support a temporary halt on development, uh, new development below the choke. Uh, those are important issues that we need to deal with. Obviously there's a lot more in a very complex plan. Uh, I guess my parting message to you is that after a very long time in politics as a former New South Wales Minister for Agriculture and Shadow Minister and now in this role, uh, I know there's a lot of people out there who'd like to think that they could get rid of the Basin Plan and get water back. I just don't think that's realistic. There will, I do not envisage any makeup of a parliament which would agree to that. And that's why the NIC, along with many other irrigator bodies, thinks that our best chance of certainty, our best chance of certainty for investors as well as for communities, is to do our best to work with governments to implement the plan as it stands. Thanks for having me.